Well, good morning. I want to begin uh, with a question for you today, a question for you to think about. Have you ever done something foolish? All right. Have you ever done something? All right, raise your hand if you've done something foolish. All right, look around. Uh, just know you're in good company. All right, you can put your hands down. All right, all of us have this in common. All of us have done something and then either immediately, right, sometimes when we do something foolish, it's, it's instant, right? I mean, the, the moment it's done, the moment we said it, the moment we did it, right, we realize that was foolish. Why did I do that? How could I be so dumb? But there's other times that we've done something foolish and we don't realize so much later. Now, no one, we, we, we've all done foolish things, things we wish we could undo, you know, sometimes we wish there was a little rewind button in life and I could just scooch back five minutes and redo that scene, but it doesn't work that way. We, we've all done foolish things, but no one makes it their aim or their goal to be a fool. No one makes it their aim or goal to live a foolish life. But, as we've said, all of us have done foolish things. And most of us would have this in common, that most of our regrets in life have to do with that common theme. Why was I so foolish? Why didn't I see that coming? Right? Why didn't I see that coming? Why didn't anyone tell me? Why didn't I listen? When it comes to the foolish things that we've done, sometimes they're done publicly. Like everybody sees it and everybody knows it. And other times we've done foolish things and nobody knows it. We are talking about fresh starts this week and the fact that God offers us fresh starts. And it's my prayer for you, it's my prayer for myself, that my time here, your time here, our time together, will really be a fresh start for us, that God will do something in us, that He will show, him, show us Himself in a fresh way, that He will speak to us, that He will teach us. You know, when I was a camper here, that's what God did for me. And I shared a little bit of my testimony uh, Sunday night and a little bit yesterday, but, but God awakened me while I was here to a life that I was really failing to live, which was actually the Christian life, the life of knowing God, the life of pursuing Him and pursuing His call and His purpose on my life. And it really was here for the, really the first time that I understood that God had a purpose for my life and that God had a plan for my life. And God has a purpose for your life and a plan for your life. We, we talked yesterday about how obedience is the pathway to genuine joy. And that obedience to Jesus really is essential in not only a fresh start, but I want you not to just have a fresh start, but I want you to have a strong start. I want you to have, uh, I, I want the impact that God does in your work, God does in your life this week, to not only impact you for a little while, but for the rest of your life. And so I, I want us to talk about wisdom today, right? because wisdom, like obedience, is essential in the life of following Jesus. Wisdom is essential in the life of following Jesus. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to take knowledge, right, and apply it to life. Wisdom is the ability to make choices and decisions that align with what is right and what is true. Wisdom is the ability to take what is God has revealed as His good and perfect will for our lives and apply it to our lives. And so wisdom is taking what is true and what is right, and, and we're looking at wisdom from, from a biblical point of view, right, from God's point of view, is that we believe that God is the creator of wisdom. God is, the, God is our source of wisdom. He, he is the embodiment of wisdom, and He offers wisdom to us. And He invites us to live in wisdom. And wisdom is essential. Now, it can sound easy, right? Take knowledge, apply it, make good decisions, right? But sometimes we come across situations in life where we're not certain what to do. How many of you have ever had a situation where you say, I wasn't certain what to do? Yeah, it, it wasn't immediately clear. It, it wasn't as though God had specifically said I should or shouldn't do this thing. And so it requires wisdom. Should I do this or should I do that? There are other times that we know what to do we know what we should do, but we don't do it. Anybody ever been there? Right? You knew the right thing to do. 
You knew, that it, that you knew what you were supposed to do. You knew what God wanted you to do. But instead of doing that, you did something else or didn't do it at all. Every single day, smart people make stupid decisions. Right? Every single day, people that are intelligent, people that are smart, make stupid decisions. Decisions that go against what is right, what is good. And, you know, it's easy sometimes to see that in others. How many of you have ever watched somebody else making a bad decision and thought, how could they be so what? Stupid, dumb, right? How, have anybody experienced that? Right? Yeah. It's sometimes it's a lot easier to see it when it's someone else. We, we can see, oh, don't, don't make that decision. That's a bad relationship decision. Don't date that person. That's a bad financial decision. Don't buy that right now. It's easy sometimes to see the foolish choices of others, but often it's harder to see them in ourselves. We all need wisdom because it's with wisdom that we come to understand what is right, what is wrong, but then what to do in light of that. I, I want to look at one verse in Proverbs and then we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5. So if you want to turn to Proverbs 28, 26, you can. Or you can just listen. But Proverbs 28, verse 26 says this. It says, the one who trusts in himself is a fool, but the one who walks in wisdom will be safe. The one who trusts in himself is a fool, but one who walks in wisdom will be safe. Now, the book of Proverbs is a book about wisdom. It's a book that Solomon wrote, and he wrote it from the perspective of a father to a son. And it's filled with teaching about wisdom. In fact, over and over again in the book of Proverbs, wisdom and foolishness are presented and contrasted. And the highlighted, the difference between a wise person and a foolish person. And here's the thing, we all need God's wisdom. Because God's wisdom is what we are called to live by. And if we're going to have a fresh start, a strong start, we don't need to live by the world's wisdom or culture's wisdom or our own wisdom. But we need the wisdom of God. Because Proverbs says, the one who trusts in himself is a fool. But the one who walks in wisdom will be safe. And so I want you to be safe in that sense. I don't want to see you make decisions consistently that go against God's will and God's word and God's ways. And then reap the consequence because every choice that we make comes with a consequence. And while we get to choose our choices, we don't have the privilege of choosing our consequences. You can choose your choices, but you cannot choose your consequences. And so if you have your Bible still open, flip over to the New Testament. There are hundreds of verses, lots of passages that we could look at when it comes to wisdom. But I want to look at primarily at three verses in Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And there Paul says this. He says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Now, as we said already, none of us want to be a fool. But we've all done foolish things, both when we did and didn't know better. Right? There are times that we did foolish things, but we look back and say, man, that was a foolish decision, but I didn't know any better. Right? I, I, I had to learn. Right? But then there are times that we did know better, or someone warned us. When I was probably about five, four or five years old, at my grandparents' house, they had this huge cactus plant right by their front. And it, had, you know, and it, just, it looked amazing. And I always wanted to touch the cactus. But my grandparents and my parents, they always told me, don't touch the cactus. And I thought, they must know how amazing it is to touch the cactus. And they don't want me to experience the joy, the freedom, 
the delight of touching the cactus. So one day, my grandfather was showing off his flowers, and everyone went around the corner of the house, and alone I found myself with the cactus. And I thought, now I will touch you. And I grabbed the cactus, knowing it would bring joy and delight. <laughs> but instead, it brought pain. And it brought stickers stuck in my thumb and my fingers. And my grandmother had to sit me on her lap and pull them out one by one. Right? I made a what? A foolish decision. Right? I failed to listen to the warning that I was given. I, was, I, I thought that I knew better. I thought that my way would be the best way. Proverbs 28, 26 says, again, the one who trusts in himself is a fool, but the one who walks in wisdom will be safe. If I had walked in wisdom, I would have been what? Safe, but I didn't. You see, the biblical understanding of a fool is not a dumb person. It's not somebody who lacks intelligence. It's someone who leaves God out of the equation. Wisdom is, is taking knowledge and applying it to life. And if we're followers of Jesus, if we're children of God, if we've been born again, if we're saved, if we belong to God, we are called to live lives on, based on the wisdom, not of ourselves, not of our culture, but of God. And a fool, then, is someone who leaves God out of the equation. So in the book of Ephesus, Paul is writing to believers that he knew and loved well. He had spent three years with this church, founding this church, discipling, teaching, and he, he deeply loved the believers in Ephesus. And he wrote a letter to them, reminding them of the wonderful truths of the gospel, of what the gospel was all about, of what the gospel did for them, and what it meant. And as he continued on in that letter, he reminded them of, of, of why and we are to live out the gospel. And he said this in Ephesians 4.1, if you want to just flip back a page just for a minute. He says, Therefore... Right? And this is based on all the things he's written in chapters 1 through 3, describing the beauties and the reality and the truth of the gospel. He says, Therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling that you've received. Right? Paul, as he writes to a group of believers that he loves dearly, that he cares about, he says, I, I, I'm urging you, I'm begging. And Paul's writing from prison. He is in a Roman jail for doing nothing other than being faithful and obedient to God. He says, as a prisoner in the Lord, I urge you to walk worthy of the calling which you've received. You have been called by God, called to salvation, called to, to grow in your faith, to become like Christ, to be sanctified, called to serve God and to make a difference in your generation. And he says, I, I want to urge you to walk worthy, to live up to what God has done in you. And so as we think about that, Paul then goes on and he talks about all kinds of areas of a life from our thought life to marriage to alcohol to sex. He talks about all these different areas of life that says that you are to bring under the Spirit's control as a believer in Christ. And then in verse 15 of chapter 5, he says, be careful. Has anyone ever told you to be careful? All right. Who in life has told you to be careful the most? Mom. Mom. All right. Yeah, number one answer, if we were like taking a survey, number one answer is mom, right? I am, I am in my mid-40s, right? There are times where I'm talking to my mom on the phone and she'll say, be careful, right? It, you know, moms never stop being moms. And they had this instinct to say, be careful. Well, here Paul, he says, be careful, pay attention, right? Be careful how you live. He says, don't live like a fool. And that ought to grab our attention. Don't live like a fool. What does he mean? What's Paul talking about? And how do, what is he, how do I not live as a fool? Now we could spend hours, days probably talking about this subject. But I, I want to point to two primary things that a fool does. Two primary things that a fool does. Number one, a fool lies to themselves. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you've ever told a lie, but my guess is there's a lot of liars in this room, right? But here's the thing. As many lies as you've told, you've probably, most likely, told more lies to yourself than any other person on this planet. You have probably told more lies to yourself than any other person. 
lying to ourselves, number one. Number two, asking the wrong questions. A fool lies to themselves, and a fool asks the wrong questions. Let's think about lying to ourselves. How do we do that? Well, many times we do that by convincing ourselves or trying to convince ourselves that the poor decision that we made was actually a wise one. And we'll play this little mental ping pong game of going back and forth and trying to convince ourselves. And we'll tell ourselves lies. This won't hurt anyone. This just involves me. One of the greatest lies that we tell ourselves is that our choices and decisions only impact us. And let me remind you this morning, nothing is further from the truth. Every decision, every choice that you make not only impacts you, but it impacts someone else. Right? As a pastor, my decisions don't just impact me. They can have impact on my church family. As a husband, my choices can have impact not just on me, but on my wife. As a dad, my choices have an impact not just on me, but my children. My choices can have impacts on people that I'm at out in public. My choices could have impact on people that I have never met or will never meet. There are, there are choices that people made before I was ever born that have impacted my life and impacted your life. And so it's a lie that your choices are only about you. It won't hurt anyone. I'll only do it once. I haven't had any for a week. I'm careful. I can handle this. I can quit when I want to. We could go on, but there are all kinds of lies that we commonly tell ourselves. And some of your greatest regrets probably center around decisions that you made that you convinced yourself were a good decision, even though it wasn't. And many times you knew deep within yourself, this probably isn't right, but you gave yourself a reason or an excuse. You rationalized it. Fools asked the wrong questions. Not only do they lie to themselves, but they ask the wrong questions. They'll ask questions like this. Is there anything wrong with this? See, if you're asking yourself, is there anything wrong with this? You might be asking the wrong question. How close can I get to the line? Is it a sin if? Right? Is it a sin if? You're asking the wrong kinds of questions. How far over the line between right and wrong can I go without experiencing the consequences. We do this a lot when it comes to driving. Some of you have your driver's license. Many of you will have one soon. And when it comes to driving, right, there are many of us, right, many of us that, that you know, there's these signs that they post on the sides of the road with numbers on them, right? And, and there's usually two words that go with the numbers. Anybody know what the two words are? Speed limit. Speed limit. What does the word limit mean? Do not surpass. It's the, the maximum. And so we might see the number 45 or 55 or 65, or you're on the highway, maybe 75. Some states, 80, right? But we often will, what? We'll push the boundary. We'll think, well, certainly I can go three or four over. That's, that's probably not going to get me, what? A ticket. Five over, I'm still pretty safe. Six over. Nothing bad's happened. Seven over, I drove right by the cop. He didn't, you know, nothing bad happened. Seven, eight over, nine over, ten over. Uh-oh, fifteen over, and now there's consequences. And see, we just have this tendency of wanting to push the boundary. And so, all of these questions, all of these poor questions that we ask ourselves, usually lead us to asking this question, how did I get myself in this mess? How did I let this happen? Why did this happen? But here's the question that you should be asking instead, and I, I encourage you to jot this down. I believe it's a question that could deeply impact your life. The question is this, what is the wise thing for me to do? What is the wise thing for me to do? In light of what I know about who God is, about what God said, or about what I'm supposed to be doing right now, and the, and, the, and the outcome that I would prefer, what is the wise thing for me to do? And I would encourage you to base that on God's Word. Right? God's Word is the source of truth that we live by. Not only do, has God given us His Word, but He's given us His Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit indwells every believer. And so you have the Spirit of God available to you. 
And so when you're seeking to say, should I or should, what is the wise thing to do? I can pray about it. Holy Spirit, help me to understand what's the wise thing to do in this situation. And not only that, but God has given us wise counsel. Right? God's Word, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have wise counsel. And when it comes to making certain decisions, as you read God's Word, and you might say, well, God's Word clearly addresses it. Right? I want to kill him. But the Bible says to not what? Murder. Not murder. So I shouldn't what? Murder. murder. All right, so do I need to pray about it? No. no. Unless you're saying, God, restrain me. Right? But you don't need to pray about what to do. I, I don't even need to seek wise counsel. Right? God's Word, it's clear. But maybe there's a situation you say, I'm, I'm not really certain what God's Word says about this. I'm having a hard time figuring that out. I'm praying about it. As I'm praying about it, God gives me a clear sense, don't do this thing. It's not wise. I'm good. But maybe as you're praying about it, you say, I'm not, still not certain. Seek wise counsel. People in your life that you know love Jesus, that live by His Word, that will give you wise advice. I know there are situations in my life I wasn't certain what the best thing to do was. And it wasn't a moral decision. It wasn't right or wrong. But what was the best thing to do? And as I read God's word, as I prayed, I still wasn't certain. And so I sought godly, wise counsel. And God often used that wise counsel to point me to what he would have me to do. And so Paul in Ephesians 5, he says, Be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. Why? Look at verse 16. He says, Because you're to make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Time is limited. Right? Our time on this earth is limited. We get a short amount of time. And Paul says, make the most of the opportunity that God's given you in these evil days. Paul wrote this nearly 2,000 years ago. Ephesus was a pagan city. It was filled with all kinds of, of evil and sin. Cult worship was, was the, the thing of the day. Sex and alcohol were part of their daily worship rituals. The believers in Ephesus did not live in a morally neutral world, and neither do you. And in the middle of that world filled with temptation, filled with endless possibilities for bad or poor decisions, right? God calls His children to live with wisdom. Right? Your Heavenly Father has not called you to live a life at the level of what is permissible, legal, or culturally acceptable. Right? What is permissible by society, what is legal, or what is culturally acceptable is not the standard for believers. And sometimes we say, I want to follow Christ, but I want to live by the standards of culture. I want to live by standards of the times. But God calls us to live differently. And Paul would call you to see the foolishness of such living. And temptation is something that we can't get. We're bombarded with temptation because of technology. It's ever-present in our life temptations to go outside of the boundaries that God has established. And we often lie to ourselves to say, well, I can manage it. I, I, can, I can handle it. And God will forgive me and there won't be any consequences. And listen, God will forgive you. Right? God's forgiveness, His mercies are new every morning. Right? There's no limit to His grace. But there are consequences to sin. And while God has removed the eternal consequences of your sin, right? Romans chapter 8, verse 1, no condemnation. Right, for those who are in Christ Jesus. But I can assure you that God does not always remove the earthly consequences of your sin. Sometimes He allows us to go through that, to teach us, to warn others. And so don't lie to yourself thinking, I can manage the consequences, or even worse, that there won't be any. Look at verse 17. Paul says, don't act thoughtlessly. Hey, don't, don't, don't be foolish. Don't go through life unthinking. He says, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Understand. Think it through. Proverbs 13, 16. You don't have to turn there, but let's listen. It says, wise people, you could just maybe jot it down. Proverbs 13, 16. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't. And even brag about their foolishness. See, wise people realize that life is connected, that choices have consequences, and that through God's Word and the Holy Spirit and wise counsel, we can understand what God wants for life. We can live by wisdom. And you don't have to wait. You know, as you get older, you should accumulate more and more wisdom, but it's not automatic. You can be old and be foolish. And you can also be young and be wise. Because wisdom is a gift that God offers you. 
and you can live by wisdom now. Most of the time, when it comes to us, and we know, right? Most of the time we know what the right thing to do is, but we just struggle to do it. Here's the thing. Rationalizing will lead you to ruin in life. Rationalizing. When I have to rationalize my decisions, when I have to say, well, it's okay because, or I think it's all right, when I start rationalizing, I'm not on a good path in life. And many times we don't face up to this till something big happens, something painful happens. And so I want to invite you to ask this question. What is the wise thing to do? And so just a couple questions as we wrap up. Number one, are you living like a fool? Are you living like a fool? And I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I living like a fool? Am I rationalizing in my decision making? Am I lying to myself? Am I asking the wrong questions? And here's two things I want to give you to start on a different path. Number one, it's very simple. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Right? That's where it begins. I've got to be honest with myself. I've got to stop lying to myself. I've got to be honest with myself. Number two, be honest with God. Right? God already knows. He knows everything. But He wants you to be honest with Him, to bring it to Him, to say, God, I've been making some foolish decisions. I've been ignoring your wisdom. I haven't been seeking your wisdom. I, I've been making choices that, that go outside of the boundaries that you've established and set. I haven't been living a life of obedience. And I want you to forgive me. And I want to start fresh. Right? Here's the thing. You can start fresh. One of the, one of the things that often happens when we mess up or we fail is we think, well, that's just it now. Now, now I'm a failure now I've got to live with these. I might as well just go on living this way. But that is a lie. God offers you a fresh start. Be honest with God. Be honest with someone that you trust. Right? Sometimes to break the patterns of foolishness in our life, we need accountability and encouragement. So be honest with someone you trust. Number two, not only to be honest, but begin asking the right question. Is this the wise thing for me to do? And base it on these three things. God's Word. What does God's Word say about it? The Holy Spirit, right? As I, as I pray, Lord, give me wisdom. Help me to know what to do. Listen to God. And number three, wise counsel. The one who trusts in himself is a fool, but the one who walks in wisdom will be safe. Now listen, it'll feel a little weird at first. And living by God's wisdom will cause some people to think that you're a fool. Living by God's wisdom will cause many people to think you're foolish. That's crazy. Why don't you do this? Why don't you accept that? Why? that that's, that's, that's weird. But you'll never regret living by God's wisdom. And here's the thing. God has a purpose for your life. Wisdom will help you stay on that path. But also this. If you choose God's wisdom instead of your own, instead of the world's, instead of culture's, you may never have to deal with with your greatest regret, because it may never happen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your love for us. I thank you for the grace that you offer us in Christ. I thank you for the new life that you offer us through your Son. And Father, I thank you that you're a God who offers us fresh starts over and over again. And I pray that we would be a people who value wisdom, that you, that you want us to live with wisdom. And you have offered us wisdom. So Father, I pray that we would be honest with ourselves, honest with you, honest with others. I pray, Father, that we would start asking that one question. What is the wise thing for me to do? Father, based on what your word says, based on who you are, based on your plan for our life, based on where you've called us to go and called us to be. And Father, I pray that in doing that, not only would we have a fresh start, but that we would miss out on our greatest regrets and not have to go through the pain that comes from foolish living. Father, I pray your blessing over this day for all the work that will happen, the rehearsals, the lessons, the practice, the fun. Lord, I just pray that in all of that, we would encounter you and that you would be glorified. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.